in there, I believe. So. We're just chatting. We didn't come to order. Meeting CPDC to order. <clears throat> um, take everything in order, uh, as far as you know. Uh, yes, All we right. can do the continuances after. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the first item on the agenda is um, a special permit application for 335 Main Street Canine Performance. Is someone yes. here? All right, great. Um, do we, um, do we, do you have anything that you want to start with? Or? Uh, so as you probably know, this is an existing use, uh, down on Main Street, South Main Street, uh, canine performance. He could elaborate more on what exactly they do there, but virtually they are under our zoning. We had elected to call them, um, sorry, let me find the exact word, veterinary, um, animal kennel training, which requires a special permit granted by you for a use to be allowed in that zone. So he has come forth to apply for such special permit to expand into the existing building that he is already located in. I will hand it off and... How you doing guys? Good. My name is Steve Roberts. I own Canine Top Performance in Reading. We've been in business for May 1st. will be 10 years. And um, as of a couple months ago, the Encore Dance Academy had vacated the front part of the building. And I was looking to possibly expand all the way over. So we have a full service daycare, boarding, training, kennel. And um, we do a lot of behavior modification with dogs that have aggressive issues or whatever the case may be. And we've trained, I'd probably say at this point, thousands of dogs in, in Reading and the surrounding areas. And um, we're just looking to expand over. So what we want to do is um, we want to move the reception area into the very front of the part, uh, at front of the building, as well as having one private training floor and then a storage area. I was also looking into the very front of the building. I had given a chart. It was like a layout of, of the property. I'm not sure if you guys have that. Yep, there it is. And, uh, and then the model builders, they own the... They rent the very back of the building, and they were looking to rent the, the front of the building from me as a potential showroom as well. So I wasn't sure. So I'm just hoping to be able to, to do that. And so there would, be no, there would be no daycare over there. There'd be no boarding over there. This would just be one private training floor as well as a new reception area, as well as the, uh, the storage area just for supplies and all that kind of stuff there, which I could potentially talk about more, which I would like to do over there. Um, looking to possibly expand um, and use the storage area as a grooming room, if that would be possible. And uh, if not, you guys just let me know what you guys think and what else you would need from me for this. All right. I think a few years Questions. back, right, <coughs> that, that use wasn't allowed. That's probably why you had to go get the variance yes. the first time. Mm -hmm. But then we, we wrote it back into yeah. the zoning mm -hmm. so you could do it. Oh, I, special permit. Yeah, I believe they got a special permit in 2005 by the ZBA for use substantially similar to a permitted use, um, and then we switched it to CPTC would grant such special permit. Right, so that was a variance before the right? No, no it was a special, special permit, permit for use, yeah. All right. So I guess, um, can um, can you put that the floor plan back yep. up? Is that the floor plan of the entire building? No, that would just That's be the just new front the section new which we are okay. looking to move into. Okay. All right, turn the corner like that. So you you now you use the section. Um, further away from yes. that. Yeah, it would street. be 8,000 square feet right. prior to that part there, and that's right, uh, right on Main Street there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so it's an L-shaped building. Yes, it is. In the back yeah, here. the back is owned by the model builders. We have this section, and then that used to be uh, formerly the Encore Dance Academy, and they had, they had moved. So the good thing is that it's kind of, it's the same traffic pattern, right? <laughs> Drop off your puppy or dancer. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, and the parking right now is underutilized because the Dance Academy is not there. Very much so. There's always spots. So what would Mott do for bathrooms up there? They'd use your bathrooms? Uh, we, that's something we haven't fully discussed yet. This would be part one, you know, kind of figuring out if one, we can even access, you know, that part of the building. And then um, he had come in and taken a look and he was thinking on the right side of, of where it kind of says meeting area, you know, that would potentially where he would want to put bathrooms. But we haven't even gotten into any of that stuff yet. I just wanted to get this part yeah. done first. So why, why couldn't he do a grooming area in that? Storage area. So, so he couldn't do that? No, as far as I know, he certainly could. We have no fall under the same use, so mm, if that's what you wish to do with it. Yes, having any problems with that. I brought a, a plumber in to take a look to see what he would think, and he said that we could potentially connect off uh, right from the men's room you know, and for, for the drainage and all that kind of stuff there. So he said it would be possible, so I figured I would ask you guys first if that was something that would be okay. So does this all connect in with the, the space that you have yes. now? Yes, it was two separate parts, you know, but there, there was a door, um, if you don't mind walking over here. Right around here, there was a door that would connect both, uh, both areas together. Oh, okay. And so we would just be able to open that door, and in this case, I would just take the door right off, you know, so that way we could just flow in and out of both areas. May I ask, uh, yes. you only have one entrance into your facility? There's two. So, okay. so I mean, right there is the, the front entrance there. That would be the new front door. And then you can't see it from here, but if need be, there's a joint hallway that used to connect both buildings, and there was another exit right here, too. And your expectation is that your customers, dogs, and owners would come in through that portion there? Yes, they would come in this way, okay. and then the plan was we would have them then exit out the other way. Because what we're trying to avoid is dogs passing each other and people walking in as other dogs are walking in and things like that, just to avoid any incident. I also had a question, do you do any training outside? We can use the, we use the parking lot, but we keep everything on the property for liability purposes. So that you're already doing that, right? Yes. Using that. Using yeah. That. <laughs> and if that's a problem, obviously we're welcome to, to keep the dogs inside. Just a point of curiosity. Okay, yeah, yeah absolutely. And so you have overnight kennels facilities, we correct? We do. And those aren't changing though. They're not no, expanding no, them. No, They're not that's all that's them. all staying in the in the initial part there. Okay. I'd love to have seen the before picture as well as the after, just for curiosity's okay. sake. The whole building oh, to, to have, have an idea of the flow yeah. and can you bring up the safety alert? and yeah. so on. And that is exactly what the building looks like already. No construction would need to be done. Everything was all set up for the dance academy. The reception area that she had would be my new reception area. And, and everything is, is suited perfect for, for what we need. I think the only thing that might need to be done is, is the model builder might need to do a few things if he needed to, if that was approved. There. So there's Main Street running top, up and down on the left. Mm -hmm. and plenty of parking. I actually did use the facility when my dog was younger. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> so you, so there's it, there's like a there's a long section and then a, a section that's more uh, parallel with Main Street. Yes. We, this section okay, no. here, this is all model builders currently. Gotcha. And then this would be our section, I think, into this part of the, where the space is here. And then this would be the new area here. So it's actually one less tenant, really. Yes. You know, it's a dance academy, which is, you know, people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, would it be appropriate at this time to ask about parking and shared parking between <laughs> <laughs> We're all saying the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You always ask. I would like to talk about that if we could. <laughs> the cones on Google Earth. <laughs> yes. We've been We're having a, a big problem with, uh, with Beggar World. You know, so everybody from Beggar World, and it never used to be an issue, you know, but over the last, 
I would say the last three years, I have had so many issues with people coming in from Bigger World, taking their trash, and just throwing it all over the parking lot. I have tried to reach out to the Bigger World owner, talking to him like, if you guys want to take a few spots, I'm happy to give you guys a few spots, you know. Give me two to three hundred dollars a month. My employees will go out and clean the parking lot every day, and he hung up on me. So that's, that's what I got from him. And um, ever since then, it is, it's just been a battle. I've tried to talk to him a few times, and it just hasn't worked the way that I wanted. And um, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And now people are, they're running over the cones. You know, they're like, somebody knocked over one, because I have signs now just on a few spots that say, parking for canine top performance only. Uh, somebody knocked over the sign the other day. And it's just getting to the point where I'm just not sure what to do. My, one of my employees on a Sunday shift is by himself. He has been threatened three times at this point for going and saying, guys, you can't park here. The Reading police have been called multiple times, and I'm just not sure what to do about the situation anymore. I'm about to just let it go and just let people park there, but I'm just, I'm sick of just cleaning up after everybody, and then that's all it is. And I, I tried to reach out to the Bag World owner about two years ago, maybe a little bit less, and um, he wasn't willing to work with me whatsoever, so. I'm just, I'm not sure what I should do about that situation anymore because the Reading police don't know what to do about it, you know, and I'm ready to get a big sign that is also associated with Gray's towing so we could have people towed, but at the same time, I serve as Reading citizens, and the last thing I want to do is have somebody park here, and then I'm towing away a potential client or a future client or a former client. Those are also Reading citizens that aren't respecting property, so... That's Park a tow truck there. Yeah, and I've debated on buying my own at this point. You know, it's gotten to that point where it's been very frustrating. I don't think it's his responsibility to, to um, share parking with uh, a neighbor. That isn't a willing to, neighbor. You know, yeah. I absolutely agree. I was just trying to see if there were any uh, communications between, if there was any possibility. And I'm open to accommodating with him. We have way more parking spots than we need. The only time it is busy is in the morning and at night, you know. And um, I, I was totally open to working with him. He just didn't seem very open to, to working with me. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Um, any comments from the public? All right. Anything else? No, this, this is just for the special permit for the use, right? No signage here. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't have any, any more questions. Oh, just as a information, Andrew, on the decisions, right? Mm -hmm. We told you to change the vote. I would say that zero, zero, zero. Yes, I actually noticed that today as well. Okay. Thank you. Just leave it zero, zero, zero so that it's not misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. So we don't assume. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. On the template, you mean? Yeah, the template is yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans, just out of curiosity, to add more signage? Yes, at some point what I would like to do is, because now that there's only two tenants there, the Encore Dance Academy had taken the biggest part of the sign, which is up towards the top. I would like to, at some point, take my sign and put it up there and then offer to Jeff to expand his down onto the bottom. You know, so he would have where my sign is and his sign is, and I would take the very top. Mm -hmm. that, that is something I would like to do at some point. Because I had applied. Change the signage, but not at the size. Or the no, the sign would stay the same. And then I think the only thing, it would pretty much look like the logo that you guys had on the mm -hmm. front, except it would just say the rest of the services that we offer, as well as the phone number. Great. If it doesn't say it on there already. Any 
Any comments on the decision? No, so no. Motion. Sure. Closed us. Um, it wasn't a public hearing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Special permit. Special permit's always a public hearing. Let's say we close it. Right. Yep. <laughs> Motion uh, move to close the public hearing for the special permit decision for 335 Main Street. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CPDC approve the special permit. Decision for 335 Main Street, K9 Top Performance. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for meeting me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Switch jobs? Oh, yeah, we, we voted oh. yeah. Scooper. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take all the minutes. Right now? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, might you read the public notice or something? And maybe step in for John. If you're not here, somebody else will step in. Okay. Got it. And you yeah. might roll into that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did that last Monday? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. no. so at the so end of the leave. meeting, right, did you end up, you had to leave early? Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, my tenure went too long. I usually try to do it, do it in July. Mm -hmm. uh, not having full board and everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a signed permit application for 648 Main Street, Nella's Pizza. Um, so these are the owners of Nella's Pizza. Uh, they are moved into the net right next to CVS on Main Street, uh, formerly Pizza Town. They have taken over as Nella's Pizza and are just looking to redo the sign design at their building to have their new store name, Nella's Pizza. So I'll hand it over to them and... Hi, my name is Mark Buffett. I'm the part owner. Antonella's the other one. Um, so yeah, we would just like to see if we can maybe change the name of the business. Well, we have changed it. We'd like to have the sign now officially show that we are Nella's Pizza. So. Uh, we People would. get confused because the sign it says Pizza Town, but we are Nella's Pizza, and like <laughs> <laughs> get a little bit confused. Oh yeah, so oh, that's yeah. how it hopefully it would look like. That's how um, our design guy has it. Is, is it really going to be yellow? The uh, the letter? Yeah. Yes. What about the valence on the awning? Does that st the awning still say Town Pizza and Deli? Yeah. That will be, of course, change, yeah, right? But that's we yeah. probably just overpaint, just so I don't know. Yeah, I change. The main thing is that the big sign, first of all, goes to because we often have people come into the store and say, "Is this Nellis Pizza?" We can't find it. You're not like, oh, "Yes." <laughs> and is it is it a flat sign or is it engraved or built up? Uh, the way they design, I, I, Andrew, can you bail me out here? Because I think it's like the way these. I believe it's only an inch deep, um, yeah. just going right in the existing sign block. So everything should be a flat facade. It's all the formed plastic. So. But the letters are flat, and the and the graphic is flat. As far as I had read, yes. The form high impact plastic logo box with the yeah. other info is just a breakdown no. the display. Logo and letters are one inch deep. Oh, okay. The logo. No, it says the logo box. The logo box, right? Oh. Yeah, it's the red one. Yeah, so for each of these seem to have a box with slightly raised letters. Were you here when Pizza Plan came in? I don't remember. No. 
So they came in and argued that red makes people hungry. <laughs> so they, they to, uh, That's what he told me when, yeah. uh, when he sold it to us. Yeah. I'm like, nope, the food makes people hungry. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> you want them to sort of match the, you know, the, the tenure. The building is all blue, right? But whatever, we were trying to piece them, I guess. Like these three pieces in the building is blue. Mm -hmm. And they changed some. That's got a master signage sign on on the um, North yeah, Bank building, that, right? Yeah. So those were all sort of black backgrounds. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of in keeping with Dimitri's. And it's the same thing, yeah. A little bit like I mean, Dimitri's. Yeah, you're right. Keep those red painted bands on the window. No, we're gonna take it out. We're gonna oh, that. Yeah. Those would be removed. Yeah, we'll remove it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know that there's a limit to how big a sign in a window can be. Or if you do replace them with something later. Right. Oh. Make sure you <laughs> check. <laughs> All right. Those yeah. things can be. You yep. can't cover the whole window with pictures. No, oh, no? there's no way. Oh. Well, you want to cover the whole window? The bigger the better. No. No, nope. you just keep it. No. <laughs> as many signs up as you want. If the food's not good, no one's good. <laughs> there you go. You want your pastor to to see people eating the food yes. in the window. Exactly. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing that is worth noting is your illuminated open sign is required to remain stationary in the so setting that it can be on a flashing it. sign. The open yeah. sign? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we know that. Okay. Yeah, it won't go flashing. It okay. just stay on yeah. open. Yeah. 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 Other questions or comments? I was wondering if the caricature was in keeping with the other stores in town. So if anybody else has a knee-jerk reaction to it. Well, it's not that I love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in our 40R design standards, we talk about blade signs yes. using graphics and things like that. So if you had a bakery, for example, you might just put a symbol of bread or something like that. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what we've done on Haven Street, if anyone's actually begun us up on that, blade signs. Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything. We talked about that in our design guidelines. Okay. Nothing um, with the nothing graphics. The, logo, yeah. the yeah. only one I can think of is the Pilates studio, the blade sign oh, outside yeah. of. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. What would that matter, though, is that the entire sign area includes that graphic. So if it were, if it were not in this, in this panel, mm -hmm. then the area would be calculated with all the letters plus the graphic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Would be less desirable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I imagine the yellow is too bright, but that's okay. What about going yeah. with the gold, like Sims? Are you speaking <laughs> married to that yellow? <laughs> no, I've always liked yellow and black. Yeah. Um, so you guys don't like the color? <laughs> it's, it's very bright. yellow, as White. opposed to say maybe coming down and here. Maybe little. gold? The gold, look, it's what next door is gold. Yes, it is gold. And it, that doesn't really depict the gold as bright as it is. It's a bright gold. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not saying to make it as white as the jeweler sign looks. 
but maybe not a B yellow. That looks gold. Uh, it's it's looks very gold yeah. here. It's pretty gold in this. Yeah, picture. if you look at the Google upper, if you look at a Google picture, it'll look. Um, yeah. A little different, and you can look at the Vichys too. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Anima. I'm on the wrong way. It's gold, right? Yeah. 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 Gold here. Get gold on the other side of CVS. <laughs> getting dizzy here. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gold. I think, I think gold might yeah, be more appropriate. Yeah. And I think with the black background, unlike Dimitri's, which has like a little, uh, I would say sort of like a grayish green, I think. Mm -hmm. With a black background, it will rub. Uh, the gold will stand out. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. There's the Pilatus sign too. How about a yellow gold? Something in between no. there. No problem. <laughs> Can you see that Pilatus sign? I think she's got a little one. Yeah. She does. Yeah. 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 There's the more right. kind of yellow. I mean, the little books has yellow. a has a logo on it too. No, nope, too far. Too sure it's cold. Right yeah. there. It's cold yellow. Behind that light post. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's gold. It's yellow. Yeah. See? The bottom of it is the right. Yeah. yeah. The white lamb books, is that how you say it? She she's got a, a logo on her sign. Yeah. Cheap. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. we saw that too. Yeah. 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 yeah we, we kinda of encourage that. Because then the blade signs might not have any text on them at all. You know, if somebody's brave enough. Yeah, we say that cheap Do you know what um, the material is going to be used for the graphic and the lettering and the, how it will fade over time? Well, the material is plastic, but, you know, you know these, how long these things last. I mean, it's, 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 apparently it's the same material that we have right now. Okay. But uh, they don't say how long these things last. Hopefully, it will just a long time. <laughs> Do you want to say anything here about covering up the awning sign? Yes. Or is it permitted? I mean, it's confusing because it's a different name. Mm -hmm. um, is that actually, is it, are they allowed to have both? They are allowed to have both. Uh, so long as it's not more than three square feet, I want to say, on the awning, it doesn't even count as a signage. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's under four inches or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So I can throw a condition in that if the awning language is to be changed, that would be submitted to town staff. Yeah. Oh, just to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry. What were you going to add, Andrew? About I was going to be going to add a third condition that if awning lettering is to be changed, it shall be submitted and reviewed to the staff planner. And if you'd like, I can add a fourth condition for plan changes and details that the lettering shall be gold or a darker yellow. We actually weren't thinking of having a name. We're just going to get rid of that whole. 
repeats the town part and just leave it blue, like you just kind of leave it blank. blank. Uh -huh. Yeah, leave it blank. Just yeah. have it a blue yawning. Okay. You don't have to shoot me an email when you decide, and then we'll go forward with whatever you do decide to do. Okay. Go the appropriate way. I just want to make sure I understand. So a new a new piece of awning would be added that wouldn't have any lettering. Is that what you're saying? Unless you would necessarily put a whole brand new yawning in there. Yes. Maybe there's a way we can just yes. we'll talk to someone. No, about there's it. no way you can take out the, the word. You have to. Change. We've had people yeah. try and like paint over yeah. Yeah. awning yeah. signs yeah. and it just it doesn't work it, out. Right, no. there's a one that did that and it looked Venus, horrible yeah. and it came through and it, it just like bad, bad <laughs> idea from the get go. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. right, I mean, that you spent a bunch of a time lot on of that. Time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> no details to Well, you're allowed to have it. You don't have to change it. It's confusing. If you find it's confusing and you want to fix it, then mm -hmm. you yeah. don't fix it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if I'm correct, from what Tony said, <laughs> I'm not sure, but that doesn't, if, if, you, if you replace it and it's a certain size, it doesn't even count as signage. So we don't need to approve. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, certain. and that's four inch lettering, 36 inches wide. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a really pizza in Delhi. Which is, that's, if you just put Nella's pizza on there, we wouldn't. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, the as well and everything. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Motion. Sure. Yeah. Uh, move that this PDC approve the certificate of appropriateness for 648 Main Street, Nellis Pizza, as amended. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck. Good luck. I'll forward this. I'll revise and send it forward to you guys and post yeah. with the town clerk as well. And then you can just work with the building department to get the permit. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, uh, do they have to wait a period of time? I don't believe there is an appeal period for certificate okay. of appropriateness, but I will double check on that. But I don't believe there is. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. 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 Thank
Uh, so when are we going to move that to? The 13th May 13th, right? which nothing is solidified on that agenda yet. So if we want to say 7.30, that would work. Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for 116 West Street to May 13th at 7.30 p.m. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> right, yeah. Just keep on checking. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is a continued public hearing for definitive subdivision plan at 135, 139, 149 R Howard Street. Um, that application has, um, I don't have the letter, but they, I'm told that they requested that the. Um, yeah, they have continued to May 13th as well as they finalized with conservation in some other areas. Um, suggested time? Did you just say uh, that? Oh. If we did, we can say 7.45, um, because we're not sure if all of them will again continue or not. So we can say no. 7.45. Yep. Uh, move that the CPDC continue to public hearing for 135, 139. 149 R Howard Street to May 13th at 7.45 p.m. Second. All those in favor? All right. Next item on the agenda, uh, 258, 262 Main Street, uh, continued public hearing for a site plan review. And they requested uh, that the and be continued to May 13th. We can say 8 o'clock for that one. Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for site plan review at 258 262 Main Street, starting CRE Ventures, to May 13th at 8 p.m. Second. All those in favor? So this is the the site that's been dormant for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they have a deadline approaching at all? No. Um, their special permit lapsed, which is why they had come in to reappear before the board with their new proposal, but they can keep continuing, really, as long as safe. Like, So, um, so from there we have minutes. I had hoped that you guys had kept your 114 and 211 minutes from prior meetings. Um, this is one set of minutes. <laughs> kept everything else from that meeting. They are online, I guess we could do that. Yeah, it's up to you guys. Um, if you'd like to approve them tonight, I would like to do so, but I can bring hard copies to the next meeting if that's easier. Give you all the three eleven minutes, so we could at least approve those tonight if you'd like. Let's do that. So the page numbers don't show up on the footer. I'm not sure if that's. Um, yeah, I had noticed that as well, and in the time PM up at the top. It shouldn't be question marks, I believe, when they were forwarded to me, the two different versions of Microsoft. Oh, we have a little funky, over. yeah.
page two, mm -hmm. the first mention of uh, Mrs. Mercier. Mm -hmm. The rest of them say Miss. Mm -hmm. Mm There's a typo on page three at the bottom, the bullet that starts with 30 feet. Mm -hmm. um, should be this instead of his. Yep. So if anybody's watching on TV, they're watching us read. They are. <laughs> so sorry. It's really odd because uh, it's not recorded on the TV one. No. No. Yeah. 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 It should be on. It may be being recorded, just not broadcast at this time. We usually do it live. Usually. Because there are times I've turned in to others that I know are going on and it's nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. 
We were definitely lost. <laughs> 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 and you, you. are listening. <laughs> 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 well, it's reassuring. Make sure that's included in the notes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Last paragraph on that page. Yes, so Mr. Safina said the windows are smaller. Mm -hmm. So then it says Mr. Olinger confirmed all the windows will be precast. It's all the window trim. All the window trim. And they were just on the Haven Street side, I think. Okay. Or all the windows in masonry. Mm -hmm. I think it's understood that the windows around back aren't covered yeah. in previous trim. Mm -hmm. Also, on, on the next page at the top, it says removing some balconies. Didn't they remove all the balconies? Yes. The only comment I have is that you're missing the documents reviewed at yes, the meeting. Yes, I noticed that as well. Thank you. We'll add those. I'll change all the question marks to periods as well.
page eight. Um, the middle of the page says the commission discussed the, the revised rendering. Mm -hmm. I think I would change that first one to, to be something like the base or the building base along the brick front should be stone to match the floor ground. Um, Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Sure. The, the building base along the brick front should be stoned to match the approved drawings. And the third one, um, awnings not shown for clarity uh, should be done. Should be, yeah. Uh, in the Photoshop above garage, I think. I think we just told them to, um, to add a false shadow mm -hmm. above the garage so it was clear that that was recessed. from 3, March 11, 2019, as amended. Second. All those in favor? Thank you all. Thank you. So we have two things li left on the agenda to discuss uh, potential zoning bylaw amendments for November and uh, 40R design guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. On order. Perhaps you could check with the public to see if there was specific questions or comments sure. someone would like to make. Are the meetings? Mi minutes? Um, no. You came in late. I didn't know why you were here. Oh, I was, uh, I wanted to listen to your uh, discussion about the zoning regulation changes. Okay. And trying to understand the schedule of it and things like that. All right. Thank you. So I'd have some quick updates on that, though it's only been a week since we last met to discuss zoning. Um, we have talked to town council on the CBD definition and the marijuana definition, where he did pull that definition directly from MGL, but if we wanted to clear it up and make it easier, um, we can simply say in the definition 
as defined in MGL chapter, I believe it was 94G, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that was his alternate way of proposing it. I don't know if you would be opposed to that or for that. Gets rid of the clunky language, but then it forces, redirects someone from... I believe the last time the issue was brought up is THC mentioned in this definition, which it is. Um, I'll tell you that um, I actually like referring back to um, the MGL because um, I, I have a feeling that this is things are still kind of evolve in the definition of of um, hemp versus. I, I, there, I mean, we even picked, we, we poked holes in some of this. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's more holes to be poked, and, and this needs to get refined even more. And we don't have, like, we don't, that's not us. You know, the town, or we're not going to pay town staff to continually to update this right. definition as it evolves. I, personally, I don't like the idea of, of referring <laughs> <laughs> referring back to that, but I just think this I think this is too much for um, for zoning. <laughs> okay, so s but staff will have to refer to it when they need. Uh, well, to check something. that's right. That's that's the other part of this that is a little bit um, that's awkward or unenforceable. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's um, I can just, just start from step one for a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the point of redefining this was to allow CBD products, mm -hmm. right, which are from a different plant but from the same family. Right. And so we were mm -hmm. trying to clean up the definition so that that particular plant, the hemp plant, mm -hmm. and its products were excluded from the marijuana definition because we prohibit marijuana products. Correct. Correct. So then we weren't happy with the way it was broken out or we still found it confusing. What what this does is what? It takes it adds a definition for hemp mm -hmm. and then it replaces the definition for marijuana with this. to exclude hemp. To exclude. But it didn't really do that, right? That's why we got messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Because it has the same language in both. Yeah. It seemed to anyways. Right. So, if we refer, if we refer it back to MGL, what does that do? Does well, that the question really is, what's, which of these definitions came from that? Both? I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So I was wondering is if, is yeah. if both of those definitions are in there. And does the MGL differentiate? Does it care? I'm going to guess, yes, it does, because it allows one and disallows the other. of any plant of the genus cannabis that is it. Oh, whether growing or not. So it's the right. second part. It's where it says yeah. shall not include right. one, the mature stocks. Yeah. 
Look at the next subparagraph, which are mm -hmm. stocks. Sure. stocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that from marijuana down seems to be right from MGL. Mm -hmm. Is that B paragraph in there as well? The second paragraph, which says hemp, including that? Hemp or. And this just goes on forever. <laughs> it's just yeah. one, two, three. So yeah. the definition is one, two, and three. Yeah. And then it changes. Yeah. What's the number three? No, no. Back, back. We were. Yeah. yeah. Just scroll up a little. So there's a definition, and then there's three exceptions. Mm -hmm. Just says hemp. I mean, it doesn't. Right. Ours seems to have. We have. We have. Well, have the, there's a yeah. definition of hemp there. Right, which we use this same. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So if we just refer back, all that language is already here, and if it evolves, like you said, and we don't have to keep updating. Yeah. But then, what are we doing at town meeting with this? Are we giving them the option to approve? A definition that allows hemp, or and an option to prohibit all. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the, the plan is. Yep, mm -hmm. both. To give me two, it's to give me two. This one. one allows yep. it. This one does not. Yep. Okay. So if we refer to MGL for definition, what does the language look like to allow, and what does the language look like to prohibit? Because that's what we have to write, I guess, to give it to the town meeting. So the language to prohibit would simply... Including CBD extracted from him. Okay. And the language to include it then would, would do what? Just refer to MGL? Eliminate everything? Delete the definition and refer to MGL? I would imagine both would end up referring to M. That's a good question. You didn't specify if this one would be changed or not. Well, that one has to because. Right. Well, the definition doesn't change, but the, the language changes. The definitions are going to change. You know the rules around are all changing. Well, you know, as there's more derivatives from marijuana that may or may not have different percentages, I think there's there's likely to be more gray area between the two than there is right now. That's because 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 as they defi as even as we read them there's a lot of great there's there's overlap seems to be anyways it doesn't matter right now because the 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 number of products between the two i think is somewhat limited but as this industry matures i'm sure that that will change They were well. If they were, I guess that wouldn't concern me as much if they were. If it, if at least one of them was more well defined, but both don't seem to be. 
very concrete. It's very. I mean, that's actually, th that is fine. The definition of marijuana there that includes right, help right, because right. there's no line that you're trying to divide between the two. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. So right. Right. Anything that's that's yeah, anything. Well, yeah. Right. It's, it, it's the other one that that line just yeah. doesn't seem very well defined. Right. Just my gut is saying that we are spending a lot of time piecing this out, which amplify that by town meeting yeah. mm -hmm. thousand. Yeah. So whatever mm -hmm. we can do to be super clear and simple. simple. Like if this is confusing just the five of us, or, yeah. then we have to figure out something. So then the language would be something like, um, oh wait, our definition does not currently match MGL's definition. Is that what we're saying? No, uh, no because no. It excludes hemp. Right, and excludes. It excludes hemp. But so does the MGL that's definition. That's the exclusion number no, no, two. No, 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 no. Our definition right now, does it exclude hemp? Yes. In the medical, right? In the medical, yes. Oh, is that the issue? That's yes. the issue. Cool. Yeah, look at zone and it's moving. It's bad enough. Moving target. Yeah, that's the target. All right, teach you how to use the search tool. Yes. I don't know where it is on here. It is. Just hit Control F. It'll pop up. The three dots on the right. 56551. Say we have it a lot. It's not keeping it. Yeah. See, it, it, it does does, It does it. not exclude help. No. Okay, so if the for the option to allow it, the language should basically refer to the MGL for the definition, mm -hmm. and then our language should say that it excludes, just like that, right? <coughs> Excluding. Right. Mm -hmm. And all we need to say up front, basically as the title to that slide, is to allow hemp right. and cannabis, 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 CBD products. Mm -hmm. And the other one would clearly say to prohibit all products, right. including them. Yep. So then at least the town meeting, the town folks with their pitchforks would know <laughs> which, which one of the two things means which. Mm -hmm. They'll just need to be convinced that the language says that. And understand what hemp is as opposed to it's not. Yeah, I think the... I think they do. Tricky, but there are a lot of people in favor of the medical marijuana piece of it. That seem to be educated on that part of it. Yeah. You know, there's there's the faction that just doesn't want any of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. so no. Think. Okay. Well, hemp products are largely not regulated. The FDA doesn't look at it. No. As, nope. They were still prohibited in the federal. No. They're, they're, not, they're in every form that you can think of. They're putting them in smoothies, the CPD products they're putting in smoothies, they're putting them in oils for massage, so you're getting it in a lot of different ways, but it's not regulated. Well, technically, if it's ingested, it's supposed to be regulated. They're not supposed to be putting it into foods and edibles and so forth. Um, however, however, Washington, yes. Washington Post had an article about it, some reports and they're all saying right. it's being consumed as well as being applied. Yeah. Has the Board of Health weighed in on this issue at all? Not at all. No. I guess the 
question is, should they? We asked. Oh, and they said, no, thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure. that, that first paragraph A is going to confuse people. The second one won't, right? The second one clearly says it doesn't include hemp. Right. But that first one. I do see that, and I see not including yeah. stocks, oil, cake, maidens. That could trip people up into it. Would a track changes version be a little bit easier to? Yeah, it might, but when I read that first paragraph, I'm just not quite sure why those things are excluded. Right. Why they're different. Is it just the bud of the plant that has the THC in it? Or at the, the THC at the levels that, um, that they're talking about? Like, I don't know why you exclude those yeah. parts. Right. And is a cake made from seeds of the plant, so the seeds don't have anything in them? Mm -hmm. time. Yes, it is in NGO, but I don't know why we would be inclined that's, to... That's just town meeting talk now, right? Yeah. So right. someone's yeah. got to explain yeah. that first yeah. paragraph. Yeah. Right. Why would we be inclined <laughs> that's to... Yeah. Go I mean, straight you can get to the MGL definition. Yeah, that's the definition, but why? No, no, no. No, don't, you know, like we did that before. Remember the, um, the purpose of Section 40A. Remember Purpose the, goal, the goals of right. Section 40A. We repeated them verbatim from Mass General Law. From Mass General Law, which is the reason, which is the the, the guiding I don't know the guiding principles the of zoning, zoning yeah. for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We repeated them. Um, it gets debated for 40 minutes at town meeting, <laughs> and you know what? We it's, it's not really our place to, to change them. Right. So we repeated it because it was more clear to actually spell it out and not have someone refer back to Mass General Law 40A. But if we're, if we're not willing to change, defend and change the, 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 um, the, the terminology, why don't we just refer back? And it's not our definition. I'm okay with referring back to it, but you're going to have to bring this up. Right, you're going to bring a slide up that shows the definition and ask you what's the definition. Yeah. 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 And so you're, you will need to explain, I think, someone needs to explain why that number one paragraph is there. What does is that included? mean? Included, yeah. They might, they might think that, you're, that we are actually changing something, or that we are excluding something more than is or yeah. including. Yeah. Sorry, allowing something more than we really are allowing. And then it'll just get, it'll go around for hours and then get tabled. And I guess you have to explain to them the implications of not allowing it at this point. Because we've got businesses that have started. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think context helps, but the right context helps. Because well, the, the difference there. is that, um, is that it, if you're referencing back to MGL, then we're not going to get in a wordsmithing. Understood. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to 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 defend the definition, but we're not going to get into a let's change this word and let's change that word. That's yeah. good. That's my right. point. Um, so the distinction is we're moving from the definition, which has evolved based on the industry understanding um, evolving here in Massachusetts, and our recommendation is that we apply the rules there as opposed to our own written rules or the definition the definition, the definition you decide allow well, or not allow it would be good to understand whether that was the definition at the time in in mass general law mm -hmm. oh, we, should, we should be able to figure that out i haven't changed that they barely got their act together to get their cash <laughs> where did that <laughs> definition come from though we didn't make it up. No, no. It was either part of that petition or yeah. Uh, it was actually. I think the legislature crafted some additional language, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably came from that. So 
session after yeah. they approve it and write it. But I like the idea that you just refer to it and we can't debate the language. So now debate whether you want it or, or don't do you want don't it. want it. I just don't know if town council is going to be okay with handling it that way. He wants us to have a definition. Uh, there, there is a middle ground, and that is to do a text block that's gray, that's, that clearly states this is the definition as provided, word for word, bang, yeah. and put it in a gray block so they know, not changeable. This is text taken from, for reference purposes only. We're not changing the definition. We're just saying yay or nay. Are you asking uh, whether town council would be okay with referring back to MGL or yeah. not showing it at the town meeting? Just referring back to it as part of our zoning language. Right. Yeah. Having it as a reference in our zoning bylaw. I thought that's what they told Andrew. That no, was his other option to go forward with. The only other way he could see it going forward. I would. I can't speak for which one he would prefer, yeah. but I think the definition for him being MGL defined was but stating pretty it. spot on. Right, stating it. Stating yeah. it. Yeah. That's the difference. Having the master and rule law definition stated clearly, as opposed to what you're saying is just referencing the chapter and verse. Yeah. I like the idea of if it gets updated, because I would imagine. It makes sense, okay. but as a practical matter, I don't know if we get hung up in the legalese of not repeating it in the bylaw, word for word. I thought we've done that elsewhere. I thought we did that associated with the um, with the um, aquifer protection district, some in, in something um. where we reference back to the to to um, some um, mass general law. I thought we did. I remember that. Refer back to the DEP stuff. Yeah. Uh, I could be wrong. But the problem is when you when you don't no, repeat right? the language then when you go to town meeting, what are they voting on? Well, you we can we can Show it. Show what the language is. Extrapolate it. Say this is taken from MGL. Yeah. Yeah. We, so the question we, is, does that get included in the text of the bylaw or? No. Not necessarily. No. Just a reference. No, as part of the report. Right. As part of the as part of the presentation. Okay. Or say. maybe the background. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is the definition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But are, we're just referring back to that definition. I guess then it would say as referenced in MGL Chapter 94 yeah. G, yeah. however, that it shall not include these two things still, or is that still just as referenced? Yeah. Well, the problem is that the MathGL has a line that is not repeated in our bylaw. And that line references another section of the Massachusetts law. That's where it gets mm -hmm. That's where it starts to get tricky. Yeah. So there is a end after uh, the planted seed <coughs> presence as defined in section one of chapter 94C of the general laws, yeah. which we don't reference in ours. That's why it's so confusing. We refer it back, it would include that sentence. Well, it should say that because there needs to be a good definition of, um, of THC. THC, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? right? We're not going to define THC in our zoning bylaw. No. <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's the level we're getting into. I, I, and no, and I do get the, yeah, you get into this daisy chain. But uh, I'm not willing to stand up there and defend at a town meeting that definition. I, I, yeah. I don't understand it. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I can't tell you what it what it does. The state pays pay, pays you know millions of dollars to consultants to to come up with that. <laughs> I'm not getting paid anything. <coughs> So you'd be opposed to the definition saying, uh, as defined in MGL, such and such, and then repeating the actual language. If it's updated, though, then we've codified yes. something that yeah. might change. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Then just working down the steps. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's why we don't want to repeat it, because we don't want to get caught up in this loop of constantly changing it. Mm -hmm. All we want to do is right. say, this is the definition. This is what's included or excluded right. for what's allowed. The only other problem is if you're referencing chapter 94, section G, whatever, and the state changes it and G now becomes H or I <coughs> or something else, now you're all... Yeah, but that's... I don't think that that's common. I think that's far more common than you're, you're accustomed to. We have a lot of state references. We have a lot of references to MGL. We do. We just brought up the one for the yeah. environmental considerations. Mm -hmm. Well, let's try. What, you, you probably, what's going to change more often, the numbering or the actual language? That's the key. I think the numbering is going to change. You think the numbering will change before mm -hmm. the language changes? We do it all the time. And we do our zoning law. laws. On That's because we're we drop yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> I we think we look good compared to the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Oh. <coughs> Maybe they'll add another letter. <laughs> In between. <laughs> 0.3, 0.3, 0.6, 0.4. Remember that? Yeah. I can have town council where we can have, see if we can draft up what it would look like referencing the definition versus what we already have. Mm -hmm decide which way we want to move forward. And maybe we'll come back with the next iteration in track changes right. so you can mm -hmm. see it embedded in the actual bylaw. I know that's what town meeting definitely wants yeah. to see all the mm -hmm. time. Uh, bold and cross out, I guess I should say, not yeah. track changes, bold and cross mm -hmm. out. So that you see the actual body yeah. and then where you're crossing, where you're bolding, where you're, bold is insert, cross is delete. I think we can just get something that's very clear cut that says this will allow it, this won't, and yeah. simplistic if you have exactly. to say yeah. excludes products that don't contain tetracol chloride, whatever name it is. How about another translation guide? <laughs> <laughs> Those are help. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think where we left off in the lots in two districts was that we won't be changing it. Yeah. Yeah. Multifamily is not the same as mixed use, so and if it's safe as is, then it as is, no change is needed. Footnote one. We had decided to delete it from the business and industrial use and delete that footnote, but while keeping it in the residential district and moving this footnote down to the two-family dwelling, so it's not allowed by right, but under footnote one. Okay. Great. Um, where we left off on mixed use, I'd also asked Town Council about his definition of principal uses or categories, then didn't get back on that one. Um, so I'll continue to, I'll draft something up that's a little more clear than that and see what we can work with there. Um, Tony was right that in our bylaw under section 10.5, I believe it was, that we def we state mixed use project or development. So I was gonna just go forward with mixed use projects 
um, if you're all okay with that. I don't think all of them have been changed. There's a few that I'm sure could be still updated. Um, but I'll go forward with that. And then just as a note on the regulations, so we had come in and said 30% from what I've heard from notes I've gotten from developers and as Gene referenced last week as well is that that number is far too high to ask for. Um, we've, they've come in with numbers at 15 to 18 percent that are doable but to ask for even 25 percent is much too high <coughs> and restricts them on Parking that we would like to see, uh, garage spaces and amenities that could be used instead of strictly commercial areas. So it's tough on developers to reach that 25% goal, let alone 30. So if we had been thinking about knocking that number down to perhaps 15, 20%. No. No way. No. No, no uh, yeah. No less than 25 percent. No. Just don't do mixed use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Because uh, honestly, the reason why I say that the goal is not necessarily to develop these properties at any cost. The goal is to redevelop, invest in the commercial property. And, it, and and um, do that as best they can. Yeah. But sh we shall not lose any commercial square footage. Oh. Is sort of the <laughs> sort of sort of where I start. Um, and so I, I agree. If they can't make it work, then we'll take a one-story commercial building mm -hmm. like they're allowed to right now. Like that I don't either, like that but either, <laughs> but you know, I, it, it maintains more commercial ta tax base. Yeah. Then, fifteen percent commercial and the rest residential. Yeah, I don't think that helps us. Yeah, we can't do commercial. It's Main Street. If it's not, it, it can't be called mixed use if it's not mm -hmm. actually including another use to it in yeah. a significant enough way. Parking is not a use. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think, are, uh, we, are we down to 25% or, or are we to 30? Sorry, go ahead. Yes, I think 25% may be a workable solution because if you're creating a four story building, one story can be commercial, so 25%. If you're making 20%, then a five story building. Because you're not going to have the commercials on a two stories. Two stories. They're going to be main bottom stories of commercial and everything else. So 25 is probably uh, maximum you can go. You cannot go more, more than 25. But lower is of course better for developers. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a workable solution. I'd be willing to say 25, but nothing less. I think that the waivers need to be really tight on that at that point. We were at 30, so we could waive it down potentially. Right. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be at 25, then, then there's not going to be much wiggle room. Mm -hmm. I don't see us doing five story buildings, by the way. No. <laughs> I don't think so. items on the mixed-use component? I, I thought we made our way through that. Uh, pretty much so. I think we had kind of left off right at the intensity regulations table. If we want to get into setbacks a little bit that we'd like to see then, which I think are pretty standard. We had talked about I believe at Julie's last meeting that instead of a zero foot setback, we do a 10 because of how 306 Main still is pretty active. But I do think a zero foot setback 
may be appropriate. So, I don't know what you guys think. Three of six. Help me out. Tower Home Loans Pizza Place. Oh, oh pizza Pizza World has gone. I think it's 15. 15. If I remember yeah. right. And that was still pretty active, which is why we had said maybe 10 would be okay. No. Yeah. I'm pretty close to the street. Mm hmm. That's real close. Especially on a four story building or a three story yeah. building. Yeah. It'd be nice to have some activity in front of the buildings if they're commercial, especially if there's a, a restaurant type use. Yeah. Give them some space there. Yeah. Obviously, they don't have to be at the 10 foot line. They can push back if they had to. Right. Mm -hmm. And the lots are fairly shallow. Too, so that's why a smaller front setback would allow them more space in the rear to keep distance from those residential abutters in the rear. Yeah, there's very few lots that can have a significant single development. They have to capture several lots, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so then you start to have some ability to manipulate what this development is, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not a front to back thing, you know, maybe it starts to happen along the length of it, right? Sure, if you have a shallow site and that's all you have, then you've got to work with that. But if your site's long, then maybe you can get things happening along that length that make up for the depth, the lack of depth. I think that's where we had seen some towns have a minimum square foot area of 40,000 or so for these type of projects to incentivize combining some of these smaller lots where we have a no square foot area right now proposed. square feet, huh? Yeah. That's a big building. Yeah, it is. But the planners I spoke to said that's been pretty successful, but their front setbacks, I mean, their front setbacks were ridiculous, like a 50-foot front setback, where yeah, it wasn't as successful, but they've seen the combining of lots to be pretty successful, having that minimal. Well, I, I thought that um, one of the things that we were talking about was the requirement to have um, we can't build there's some some something about having a 40,000 square foot lot that was prohibiting is that in the you know, multi-family yeah. specifically is a 40,000 minimum. Right. And so, so I guess that's the thing is if, 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 um, if that, that was one of the things that was cited as being a limitation to our zoning for building um, building um, multifamily, why would we reinstitute that same limitation um, for mixed use development when when yes, someone would allow greater lot coverage, greater height, less setbacks than a multifamily, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we need to have a minimum lot size. I think that there's so many it other plays out from the uses, right? So what somebody decides to do, how they move around it, the lot shape, it's going to have its own limit. Yeah. 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 I think there are so much, so many other restrictions <laughs> along this area mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, you can't make it what it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
what was it, the Chapin started out being a four unit, but then we brought it down to three because it was just, <coughs> just it was on the board yeah, then. It just, it just wasn't, couldn't accommodate. Yeah. 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 So I don't think that's we'd like where they're yeah. at. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. So if those all numbers look doable to you guys, then we can move forward with those. Andrew, before you go off too far, under motel, is that note four or note five? These are notes four. They should be up to five, I believe. Yes, he would be. Well, yes. No? There's a five on the 55. Yeah. Four, no, four, no. Yeah, so I think those would stay four. You're right, and they weren't changed from the past. I'm not certain which version this one is, 2018. Yeah, this is. All right, the you're in the newest. current zoning. Yeah. So I was looking at the um, track changes. Yeah, right. But we hadn't inserted a new footnote. That footnote exists where we had truly really had thrown in additional language. Right, and if you check up in the motel, I think you're still referencing footnote four instead of now footnote five. It currently references footnote four there. Correct, so add a new footnote four, footnote. Did not add a new footnote four, I don't believe. It's new language to yeah, four. Yeah, I think it's just got language, modified. Right. It's, not a, it's not an additional footnote, so. So this black language exists, and we had added to it. <laughs> okay, I was getting confused because of the reference to a mis mixed use project. Right. <laughs> and that had to go to the mixed use. Mm -hmm. and then I can s certainly make it its own footnote if we think that is best. Um, I was trying to figure out what Julie was getting at in this footnote as well. So footnote five is just building height. Yeah. is referencing multi-family, so do we want to um, add the 30-foot language, or should we specify that's for mixed use as well? Designated. That? That's so I don't know why we had included which shall be 30 feet for a multi-family dwelling. The front yard setback. Mm 
No, it's a required yard. Measure from the shoe, which is not designated as the front line. Mm -hmm. Is that just saying all other? Uh, is that coming back to some of the changes we made recently down by industrial? So you come off the main street, you've got residential across the street. <coughs> Multifamily now. I don't think so. Business A. Business A, let's see, the required yard from a street which is not to say the front should be 20 feet other than the multifamily. We have a side yard proposed as 10, where this would say it has to be 20, I think. 20 or 30? 30. 30 for multifamily, oh, but 20, 20 for... Yeah, 20 for... So can we even start. propose a 10 with that footnote? Sorry, what's the question? Yes, what is the intent of this footnote? footnote. Four. Mm -hmm. I know, but if you read it slowly, it's fine. I'm just trying to figure out what we're concerned about now. It's really just reiterating. It's, re it's restating what's in the table. That which shall be 30 feet. It's just restating what's already in the table to be more okay. clear. Right. It's not a change. It's not a change. Not a change. It's a clarification. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six point four it's transitional areas for districts located within a hundred feet of a residential district. I didn't know if that's an appropriate spot to add, say the landscaping language, which we I have to add as well in six point five, but I didn't know if there's anything we should be referencing in these transitional areas. made it clear elsewhere, I think, when abutting residential areas. I don't think it needs to be stated here, but just some thought. Just the same language that we did in the industrial, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Do we? I mean, Tony, don't we typically try not to say things twice, if it's said once? Yeah. Yeah. We kind of get ourselves in trouble if we keep repeating. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. The problem isn't the repeating. The problem is when you change one and you don't change the other. Yeah, I understand. Right. Right. Yeah, but that's like you did a lot of work to try to make sure there was a uh, reference. <laughs> so I think we leave it the way As it is because yeah. it, it is covered. Yeah, mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. And Julie had this note on the 6.4.1.1 table to see if we should modify these because the intent isn't clear. But I'm not sure anything needs to be changed if we're not going to change anything in transitional areas itself. Mm -hmm. So under uh, rear feet for business A and B, sharing a lot with, not sure what it is, mm -hmm. um, you're saying there is no rear setback at all? NA? Not applicable? There's no requirement? My understanding has been if the business A or business B shares a lot line with a residential district. Mm -hmm. 
then you have a minimum five foot front yard, mm -hmm. a 10 foot side yard, and the rear can be zero. But that's only if the rear is already allowed to be zero right. based on the zoning requirements. Okay. So basically, assume that for some reason I could have zero, zero, and zero, okay. front, side, and rear. This says, okay, well, at least you have to have five in the front, 10 in the back, and then zero in the back. But other than that, you'd have to be using the more numbers, restrictive. The more restrictive up top. Mm -hmm. Problem is, it never tells you which way the line is. Is it side by side, front to back, back to front? Jumbled. Yeah, I agree that this, I mean, it doesn't really fit in with everything else we're doing, but right. this is really confusing right. because I interpret it something different mm -hmm. than, than you do, Tony. I, I interpret these as additional additional feet that uh, almost, need to no, be I added to it. whatever it is your requirements are. But again, doesn't always make sense because it, it all depends on wh wh where, wh what the configuration is. Right. Because there is nothing where we have a five yard setback, right. a, fr a fri five yard, l something less than a five yard required, by foot, five foot, five <laughs> foot required yeah, front yard. yard setback. Right. right. That so that would only to me mean the intent is to add five yards onto whatever your existing is, but why would you, in what condition would you do that? Mm -hmm. and I, I, I think sharing a lot line with a residence district, A and B, you're gonna add five feet to the front and 10 feet to the side. I think that's what it means. I think it, I agree with your definition. But I would agree it is, but... It's the additional... Well, the word controls kind of... I mean, it doesn't say state that. <laughs> well, if it says the following additional requirements, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, in addition to... In addition to, yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But... I wouldn't touch this because it has nothing to do with the <laughs> nope. That's another but 45 put a little, little, little <laughs> note on there that maybe we, we ought to come back to that at some point. Yeah. Can I comment on I also don't understand. It's 150 feet from the residential district. It's always going to be like touching the residential district, right? There's nothing like a gap. Residential district or actual residence? Then like uh, the building in, in business A or business B district located within 150 feet of our residential district is going to be next. It's touching, there's not like within not 150 feet, like there's a residence district and a, and a business district, both will be touching to each other unless there's a 150 gap in between the two districts. Uh, if you have a residential district, a lot for business A, and behind that another lot for business A, the second lot would also be within 150 feet. Right. <clears throat> you could also do be diagonal. So your residence could be here, and so now you, you could be across the street, two lots up, which would be within 150 feet of the residential. Right, if it's a cross street or something in between, but if right. it's not something There could be <laughs> businesses between. So you could have a 100, 100 foot lot and then the next lot is 100 foot. It's within 150 feet of the residential. But if the two districts are next to each other... That's when they share a lot line. That's when they share. That's, that's the top one. one. Okay. 
of shared load well, balancing design. Isn't it the fact that there are no business A properties that aren't within uh -huh. 150 right. feet <laughs> of, uh, of a residential district? I would think that there is. I, not I think a that lot condition that does not exist. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Uh, so other than that, on 6.5, I have to add some language for our landscaping buffer um, that we had talked about last week as well, so I'll work on that. Uh, but that's pretty much all of it, so. Mm -hmm. so I'll keep it at 30% for now with the waivers. Have to build the list we had talked about, a list of what could be waived. So I'll start developing that. Um, I wasn't implying that you had to keep it at 30%. No, when I, I said know. There, there's I, just no room at the waiver at that point. Right. Yeah, I, I personally don't mind putting it at 25% because I don't. I also don't want to um, dissuade. Yeah, dissuade. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Mm -hmm. Look, keep it look doable. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we just need to be intentional about the. You know that we're the, not going the over it. And mm -hmm. I think we need to sort of define those if we, you know. Okay. Yeah. So I'll stuff. build a list of what could potentially be waived to add the landscaping standards and clean up a few things. And so the May thirteenth agenda, if. Everything stays on the three hearings we continue today. <laughs> uh, we have a few other anticipated applications, the signage plan for MF Charles, signage at Cutting Village, a few other things that could potentially be coming. So I don't know if we'd rather schedule another hearing dedicated strictly to zoning, or are we fine? having one long meeting in May. Um, so what's the rest of our schedule for this look like? We decided we needed to have um, the public hearing June June, June 10th, yeah, which is our regular scheduled hearing. We've got a lot of time for town council to, to review. To review yeah. as well, yep. Yeah. We need like a month before we advertise. Before we advertise. Well, we could we could go with a. It gets confusing. We could go with a public hearing draft that town council hasn't reviewed yet. We've done that in the past. Because I I sort of feel like we're pretty close, close. to being right. done yeah, with yeah. all of these. I mean I yeah. I don't I. I don't think it's a whole meeting. Me either. Um, the problem is, is it more than what's available in another meeting? Right, 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 right. right. Um, I'm happy to go with as is. Uh, well, could we um, keep it on this May um, I believe he said he wasn't, wasn't it available May 13th, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we did talk about that. Could we keep it on this May 13th, and then if we don't get to it, we we schedule a meeting and then the yeah. next, oh, yeah, before, oh, yeah, before June 10th. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we can see if town council might be available as a backup. Right. How does that sound? My only issue is, what's the notification? Is it like two weeks? Right, we I was going to say my notification for legal ads have to go out two weeks before, but Perhaps. I believe we've also so talked about June 24th-ish for we could continue the public hearing till. You could always schedule a meeting and then just cancel the meeting. Well, you could open it and continue it. Right, exactly. But if we if we find that come June, May thirteenth we don't 
we 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 don't make it to this. Mm -hmm. um, two weeks out from that is May thirty, and so that yeah. first week in June, if we could have a meeting that first week in June, and then mm -hmm. still have the public hearing on it the next week, mm -hmm. can we do that? Yeah. As long as we get the ads in. Yeah, as long as I get my ads up. Let's shoot for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That works for me. Mm -hmm. Sandra, can you repeat that, please? What's the May 13th? So, it'll be on the agenda for May 13th if we find that there's not the required the amount of time that we would need for it, we'll schedule an additional hearing. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. public, hear, public hearing right after the June meeting. Yep. Right. Um, wait, you can't hold the meeting on May 27th? No. no. First week in June. Okay. First week in June, right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> June 3rd. Any other items? No, please, sir. Hmm. Are any updates? No updates from me, not since last week. <laughs> Busy week. The only uh, update on my end was uh, still dealing with the construction down on Lincoln Street and issues around that. Noise issues and complaints. It's been a tough one. Hopefully the weather will turn warm and they won't need those heaters much longer. The heat is going to be propane. They use electric heaters? Electric. That's why they need a generator. They don't need the generator. Exactly. Propane heaters. Build your scaffolding, cover it, fire the heaters into it. So if it gets too noisy, tell them to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's still, par still parking there, trucks all over the street? Parking isn't as much of an issue, it's just the noise from heating the site. Yeah. Which I'm assuming it runs 24 hours a day yes. because it's been 40-ish or slightly less. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gee, I haven't experienced any noise that's really objectionable from the property on Main Street. No problem. I, no. I, I'm able to see they don't park there trucks out on yeah. the street nobody i don't hear honking it's like magic it just more building goes up every day <laughs> <laughs> <I know. Elevator laughs> the main street project we haven't had any complaints on we've had one or two minor things on haven street about the post office but otherwise no problem that we've had it's it's been good on all these other sites well, um, none of those have such heavy residential around them yeah yeah, well, so some, but they have, about they have at least one boundary with nothing at all. So the school there's no maneuverability. No. It's going you to be what, there's going to be some noise and there's going to be some complaints and that's fair. You know, it's just but the developers sure, is much more be responsible. Yes. responsible. Yes. They're yeah. just more responsible. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. more respond like it, it's just a different. I think it's different. It's different. Hopefully. They've been thoughtful. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. So we need to officially adjourn. What's yes. the thing? So mm -hmm. what do I say? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Um, what's going on?